In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a custom projectile in the Overwatch workshop. So first, you want to have the initialization just to disable whatever you're going to be using to fire the projectile. In this case, I just have it as the primary fire. And then, just to make sure it works work out as you plan, have a variable set to a vector of zero 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 that will act as the position of the projectile while you're using it so to get the projectile ready to use you have set up right and then is the button <coughs> is the button held for whatever you're using it with. Set a variable, whatever you want, to where it's going to go. You can do that with a raycast hit position. Starts at your eye, and it ends at the addition of the eye position. You add that to the multiplication of the direction you're facing times a thousand so it'll go out basically forever you want to do it starting at the eye position and ending at the eye position just so that it'll go right where the reticle is and it'll start more or less where you expect it to whereas if you did it position of event player it would start and end lower than you would expect it to. Then all this can keep the same. And then set the variable that we set in the initialization part of it to the eye position of the event player. Then we're gonna create an effect. Can have it be whatever shape or form, whatever color you want, and it'll be created at the player variable we just set. And you'll want it to be a pretty small radius. Even this is just slightly smaller than the smallest ball symmetric can shoot out. <coughs> so depending on what you want for it, you might want it to be smaller or bigger and set another variable to the last created entity and that'll store the projectile that you just created have another variable that says that the projectile is in the air so true and then another one saying that it hasn't reached the target yet so false and then to move the projectile you have chase variable at rate whichever one you're using for the motion of it the destination will be the ray cast variable we set at the beginning of this set and then the rate will be the speed of it. If you do 10, a lot of heroes can outspeed it with Lucio's speed boost. Even 20, a couple could. 30, still Wrecking Ball could. 60 is still kind of slow compared to other projectile heroes like Zenyatta, but 60 is a little more than or a little less than uh, twice the speed of Symmetra Balls just to give it some uh, comparison you can mess around with the speed of it get it how you want and then to move the bullet is it in the air and has it reached 
Has it not reached where you're aiming? Teleport the variable you set to the projectile to the position of the moving variable. And then to have damage, you just do damage players within radius of the moving variable. Now this is a pretty big radius, but that's because where it'll register a hit is not at all where you'd really think. And this just makes it reliably hit. And you could, you know, as you tweak it, you could make this smaller as you see fit. But it would only damage the opposing team of the team of event player, so it won't ever hurt your team, just the others. Check it on surfaces and barriers, because unless you're making a projectile that cuts through those, you'd want to have that damage by event player and then however much you want to damage and then just to make sure it moves kinda smoothly have a short wait and loop if it's true so it'll always be moving with the variable and it'll always be set to damage now if it deals damage unless you want it to be able to <coughs> go through people after it deals damage you have this rule set if it deals damage and it's in the air set the moving variable back to the origin so it won't keep moving destroy the effect stored in this variable which will be the projectile you could do last created entity if you only have one effect but if you have a whole hero kit you'll probably have more than just one effect active so you'll want it to do it stored in variables set variable to f the in the air variable to false saying that it's out of the air and set the destination variable to true saying that it hit the target there's also the condition of if it hits a wall. So, did it reach destination? And is it in the air? Have a wait, just so it doesn't activate too fast. Set B, or whichever chasing variable, back to the origin. Destroy the effect in the variable. And take it out of the air and then I just have this for the destination variable so to register if it hit anything is it in the air and is the chasing variable equal to the destination variable set the destination variable or the contact variable to true meaning it reached the destination and that'll go into all of these because this will always trigger whenever it's shot and reaches where it's going it's like this will always activate whenever it's shot and it reaches destination but the damage will only need to register that's in the air and did damage and the reason to do the setting B to the origin every time you take away the bullet is just so that it can't keep doing damage if it were to reach a wall or a person because otherwise the B will just uh, this variable would just sit there and the damage could 
persist after it's already done and you wouldn't want that to happen unless it's something kind of like a widow mine or something where you launch it and then it sits there until someone comes to it and it does the damage so I'll get into a game and demonstrate it So whenever I use my primary fire, see a white ball shooting forward. Now if I go over to where the enemy is, show it doing damage. See the Ana is just behind the truck. Now I'm doing damage. Took five shots at 40 damage. It's 200 damage, just enough to take her out. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.